Welcome everyone to this week's UNI uh, press conference. First up today is volleyball. Panther head coach Bobby Peterson uh, led the Panthers to wins over Drake, Loyola, and Valpo, moving them to 20 and 5 overall, the 35th 20 win season in program history. This week headed to Illinois State Friday at 7 o'clock and then Sunday at noon at Bradley. Next up is head coach Bobby Peterson. We obviously had a, a full weekend of volleyball, or full week of volleyball with three matches, and I've, I've already talked a lot about the Drake match, but I just thought it was a great way to end our uh, first round of conference play. It was probably one of the best matches that we had played all season, so uh, very proud of our kids and their execution against a very good Drake team. Uh, then on the weekend, we had Valpo. I thought we made some uh, huge uh, advances in our offense that night. I thought we did some really good things, did some new things. I would say our defense was maybe a little bit inconsistent uh, that night, but overall uh, pretty proud of that match. And then headed into the dog fight on Saturday against Valpo. And after having a chance to like sit back and watch the match and, and think about the match, I really feel that uh, we it was a gutsy performance by our kids. Uh, Valpo uh, came in, they swept Drake the night before and playing very well. And as I said last week, they would be a team that really tested our patience, uh, just extremely tough on the defensive side. But what I think um, they've improved on since the last time we played them is they're really able to put some offense into that as well. They're not just getting good touches, but they're putting that ball in front of some people uh, that are making some pretty aggressive swings as well as uh, just being patient. And I talked about patience on our side, and I thought we went in and out of that a little bit against Valpo. But I would uh, give a lot of credit to Heather and Kendall for that match uh, as the leader of our offense, Heather, uh, and not uh, when we were not able to put the ball away. And a lot of it, again, had to do with what Valpo was doing. It can get pretty frustrating, uh, even though we're doing the right things. Uh, we're just not able to score. And I thought she kept calm. I thought she kept confident. She kept confident in her hitters, uh, which allowed them to uh, work a little bit on their own uh, game. So very proud of her ability uh, as a leader. And then Kendall, I thought it was one of her best matches in terms of leadership in the backcourt. Uh, she was really taking control of our passing. If there was somebody that wasn't feeling comfortable, she was stepping in and taking more space. And it's the first time that I've really seen her do that on her own. Uh, so really proud of those two. And then uh, the fourth set, I just would like to uh, make a couple comments about the fourth set. Obviously, it was a, a tight situation for us. We're down, being down one, two, we had to win that set. And we got down in that set. And I thought that there were some people that stepped up and made some big time plays. Uh, Carly Taylor had had some of her best kills of the season in my mind in uh, some pretty crucial situations in that uh, set and I thought it really got the team going. I thought Mo and JJ stepped up with some big blocks uh, so it was really good to see some of our kids really step up in situations that were very tight uh, which allowed us to go into that fifth set and probably have the best set of the match in that fifth set. So uh, really proud of the effort and the gutsy performance this weekend uh, against a very good and very well coached Valpo team. Uh, this weekend uh, a lot of challenges. We're on on the road at Illinois State and um, Bradley both had great weekends this last weekend. Uh, they were on the road at Southern and Missouri State, which are uh, two of the toughest places to play at, and they both played uh, very good matches. Uh, Illinois State, at last time we talked about them being one of the best defensive teams in the conference, uh, still playing great defense. Uh, Keen, it was the Keen show this weekend. Uh, she was amazing uh, with uh, 30 kills, I think it was, against Southern Illinois. Uh, but she's a kid, you know how I talked about Piper and us trying to get Piper the ball in imperfect situations. Uh, they're definitely doing that with Keen. Uh, they're setting her a little higher ball uh, when it's not a perfect situation. And she just uh, has really done a great job, both offensively and on the block. Uh, and they also have other hitters as well. It's not just about Keen, but a very good Illinois State team that plays uh, well at home. And then Bradley uh, is a team that will be very different than uh, when we played them at our place last time. Uh, they took Missouri State to five sets. They beat Southern Illinois in five sets. And it is not because either of those teams played poorly. Uh, we've seen uh, some of the video. Uh, they're doing great things. I thought they were really good defensively when they played them and really struggled a little bit with hitting errors on the offensive side and that kind was the difference in the match, uh, but they've really picked that up. They have some kids that are really stepping up on the offensive side, so uh, really expecting a challenge uh, this weekend. It's a little bit different. We play Friday against Illinois State, and then we have a day off, and we'll play uh, Bradley on Sunday afternoon, so looking forward to preparing for a, a, a good week here. Any questions? 
Now that you've got through five matches in two weeks and have some practice time, what are you looking forward to working on with this team? Well, I think uh, one of our biggest uh, areas is blocking. And, you know, we, we had a kind of a tough – that Valpo match took a lot out of us. I'm, I'm not going to lie. So today we are not going to do any jumping. Uh, we have some kids, I, I tell them that they're old, they're talking about their joints hurting and different things like that. I'm like, you're too young for the joints. Maybe muscles, but not joints. But uh, So we're not going to jump today. But um, blocking will be a big focus for us tomorrow. Uh, we continue – you know, I don't look at us as a team that's going to get a lot of stuff blocks, um, but we are a team that needs to be better at where we're positioning our blocks and the space that we're taking up, uh, and that continues to be an area that challenges us. I think, you know, we're, we keep making improvements on the offensive side and our serve-receive offense, and we'll continue to work on that, but I've been happy with where we've been at uh, with those improvements. As far as exciting wins that you've had this year, coming back in that fourth set and things you're up against even a game point or so in there, just – Talk about pulling that thing out at home on Saturday night. That it was probably one of the most exciting moments just because uh, I felt like that match was very difficult for us because I thought we went in and out of um, well, talked about the patience but in and out of feeling like we were going to win or not win that match and that that's not a great feeling. It's not a great feeling as a team. It's not a great feeling as a coach um, and in fact in the timeout um, when we were down 12-9 in that set, I mean when you look at kids you either see okay we got this, we're fine or uh, unsure and we felt a little bit unsure and we talked about that, like as to why. And the worst thing that could happen is we lose the match. The sun's coming up tomorrow. And uh, but I was really happy with our response. And like I said, some kids really stepping up in some big time situations. I mean, some of those kills that Carly Taylor had. I mean, it was it definitely got the team going, got the crowd into it. Um, so was really glad to see some of that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Next up, uh, UNI Women's Soccer and head coach Bruce Erickson. Uh, Panthers dropped a 3-2 decision on Saturday at Loyola. Panthers will play Indiana State at home on Thursday, uh, 4 p.m. kick game against uh, Wearing Pink Kick Cancer. The Valley Tournament will then begin Sunday. Uh, Matchups will be determined following those Thursday matches. Next up, head coach Bruce Erickson. Yeah, we had a, had a tough game on on, uh, on Saturday. I thought we, we played really, really well for about... Well, probably 70 minutes in the game. Obviously, didn't get off to a great start. Gave up two, two quick goals to a team that's leading the country in, in goals scored. You never want to do that um, if you want to win. And I thought we responded really well by getting a goal uh, almost immediately to go 2-1. And they had a lot of chances. Probably had the better of the play the rest of the half. And then uh, the dagger, if you will, was probably the third goal. Um, just a just a bad goal to give up. I thought, uh, you know, poor on our part. And then we came right back and scored, and and certainly made it an entertaining match the rest of the way. But, um, you know, some bright spots. I think scoring two goals, coming back, um, never quit um, against a really good, really physical team. Uh, I think will help us down the road. So. Um, Thursday's huge. We can finish anywhere from second to sixth, I think. So um, a lot on the line. Obviously, winning gets us a, a home uh, playoff game at minimum. So that's that's uh, that's the plan for Thursday. Questions? What kind of tactical goals do you have for Thursday's match? Well, we want to. You know, we we've had four in a row on the road. So I think just playing at home um, against a team that has, you know, played on a turf surface pretty much their entire schedule. Um, so that obviously takes a little bit of an adjustment. So I think just getting back to, you know, playing winning soccer and, and uh, you know, I think going into the game, we've just got to go into it winning. That's the only thing that's really in our, our control. Um, the unique thing about the tiebreakers is, you know, if we have a situation where, you you know, you win, you put yourself in a position to be, you know, in second or, th or third or whatever it may be, there's probably going to be a couple ties, and, and those are usually come down to, you know, goal differential, goals scored, all that kind of stuff. So with everybody playing at the same time the last day, you know, you want to take care of business, but you're also keeping one eye on how the other games are going. Because you get, you get a couple results to go your way, you know, now you're, now you're pushing to, to try and make sure not only that you win, but that you're, you're going to push for a couple more goals.
you have kind of an idea of how the tiebreakers are going to work, or are you just saving yourself a headache at this point? You know, we, uh, you know, when you're on a bus for five hours, you start, you know, you have the time to go through all those, and and uh, you know, we, we've we've looked at it. We haven't. We, it's mainly been a staff thing. We don't. We don't really go over it with the players. We just want them to concentrate on winning because that's the, you know, you don't want to think beyond that. You want them just to go out and play well. And if they do that and they do some of the things we we um, we cover in week this week in training, you know, it'll take care of itself. But there are so many that, you know, after yesterday's games, it, it became a little bit clearer before that, you know, when we were looking at them on the way home. We just didn't, you know, we didn't know what the results would do. I think, you know, the the, the toughest one was, was Drake winning yesterday because I think had they tied and needed to win on Thursday, um, that would have been helpful to us if we were going to try and win and then finish second. But um, we're just concentrating on the Thursday game now. What about Indiana State? How, how good have they been? What do they look like? You know, they, they – <laughs> They've played very, very well. They just have been snake bit in a few of the games, and that's, you know, that's going to keep them out of the conference tournament. But they're, you know, they're a they're a unique team. I think they're similar to us. They're they're young in many ways, so I think they'll, you know, th- sometimes veteran teams. I think that know that their postseason is is done are going to come up and and. Uh, you know, really get after it. I think some teams m- might just be so disappointed that, that, you know, they go through the motions and, you know, they just get that last game. It's a long road trip, that kind of thing. The, these guys will come to, to try and win and, and finish their, their season on a high note. So, you know, they, they've scored some goals. Um, I think the big thing is they're, again, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're young, they're, they're, uh, Attack is 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 as good as any in the the league, short of maybe scoring goals like Loyola does. But they'll be um, they'll be very energetic. They play they play hard. Watching film on them, they're they're definitely a team that's going to compete. So we'll get their best shot for sure on Thursday. For most of the year, you guys have been extremely good defensively. You have four seniors back in that back line. Can you talk about the contributions of those four? And what yeah, been? yeah. You know, I think. Um, you know, it's it sort of starts in the middle with with Mari and and, and Bitter. I think, you know, um, just looking at the two forwards we faced from Loyola. I mean, those are two of the best forwards we saw, you know, all year. I think, including, you know, Kansas State and a couple other solid teams we played. You know, those guys have just been. They don't they don't really get flustered. They <clears throat> they probably weren't at their best against Loyola, but they they still played well enough, and that's a pretty tall task. So. You know, a lot of what we do starts with those two because they're in the middle of the back. They're kind of the quarterback of the of the defense, if you will. And then Kelsey Hansen, who's started every game back there, and then Haley Kearns, who comes off the bench um, back there. You know, those guys have been solid. They've they've had their hands full all year, and um, you know, I think just their their inexper- or their experience and having been in big games, um, you know. When we played so many tight contests early on, I think um, that experience is what probably got us through a lot of those games and not conceding, you know, and not, you know, even when we weren't maybe playing as well. But we just kind of, that group just stuck together and they're kind of the glue of the team. So they've done quite well. And and Sarah Brandt, who's another one of the seniors too, you know, she... Um, She's kind of been the leader in, in in the attack for us as well, and 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 she's you know she's done it. She's done a great job, and um, I think one of the other glue players there is a kid that doesn't maybe play as much, but Juge Trezino has been fantastic. She's one of our captains, um, and and I can't say enough about all our seniors, but but those guys in particular have been they've been uh, a big big reason why we've been successful. What's the conference tournament format look like? What's the, what's the importance of finishing high? Are there buys involved? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So one and two get a buy and go straight to, to Springfield. So uh, the third seed will host the sixth seed on Sunday, and then the fourth seed will, will uh, host the fifth seed on, on Sunday as well. So, 
You know, been on both sides of it. I, I think at this time of the year, everybody's hurt. So, you know, to, to have a week to play would be nice. Um, I think uh, the crazy thing about it is, you know, the teams that are that go on the road, you know, for the game on Thursday, I, you know, a lot of them may, be, may be, literally be going from where they're playing to where they're going to play on Sunday without going home. So it's kind of crazy how, how all the scenarios are. And I think we could have four teams tying, basically tying for second place if, if everybody wins. So should be an interesting playoff. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Next up, uh, UNI football and head coach Mark Farley. Panthers knocked off their second straight top 10 opponent, a 19-14 win over Youngstown State. Now heading Saturday to the Fargo Dome against number two, North Dakota State, 2.30 kick time. Next up, head coach Mark Farley. All right. North Dakota State is uh, number two in the country right now. And uh, it, it's, you know, they get, they get the home field advantage on us, and they're a very good football team. So uh, we'll go to work today and put a plan together and see what we can we can put together for them. You're facing the best uh, defense in the FCS. What what is it that they do that makes them so good defensively? They've they've always had a solid defense. I mean they do a good job with their fronts and, and their coverages and they mix them up and they disguise things well and uh, they've always been pretty consistent in what they do on defense. Coach, what in particular has come together over the last couple weeks that's allowed you guys to be so diverse play to play on defense? Pardon me, I was thinking of something else. <laughs> My mind jumped on me, sorry. What, what, what in particular has come together for you guys defensively over the last few weeks that's allowed you to be so diverse play to play with your schemes? I, I don't know if anything came together. We'll probably just have the players, they're probably more in tune to what we expect of them and what the responsibilities are and they now have some experience of playing those positions so they know how to adjust it on the field. Uh, I don't know if there's anything new going on out there. It's just a matter of guys that are getting acquainted with it because we were playing with some really young players in some, some positions that were in decision making spots. And then maybe the other thing that happened is is when we put Keelan in at the at the nickel and we put Elijah back at the at the safety that kind of solidified some of the things that were going on mentally on the field and we had better experience on the field uh, of guys that would be able to adapt during a game as we go through a football game how, how much how much of that do you think had to do with with seven new assistant coaches just understanding the talent and what each player could bring to the team is that part of this kind of unfolding now for you it, it, it I don't. I don't have the answer of why. If we 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 did what we did the last couple of weeks, uh, I just know that we need to find a way this week to improve uh, from last week, and you know we're, we're we're we've got a pretty good. Our players know what to expect now in practice. They know what to expect in meetings. Uh, they know what to expect moving forward. And they know what to expect on, in the in the on the halftime sideline adjustment. I mean, all those things are part of a football game and you know that in game in game adjustment is probably as vital as a as a Monday adjustment and that's where the relationships and the communication all has to be fluent to make happen correctly and you know the last couple of weeks we've been we've been pretty fluent at it. Can you talk about what emerged out of Keelan to, to give him a big role like that in the last two weeks you know he played special teams and First, uh, you know, five games, and then you know you throw him in there to start at South Dakota State. First start. Yeah, a lot of that had probably had to do with, uh, you know, we didn't know what his, what he was going to do on game day. So, as anything, when you get a new player, when you get a new freshman, but he was a, a transfer, you just don't know how they're going to, how they're going to work on game day and what kind of plays they will make for you on game day because. I've seen great Monday players that can't play on Saturday and vice versa. So, but he's definitely a guy that he practices in a way he earned the spot because he he was consistent in his play during the week. He was consistent in his play on special teams, and when he got his opportunity to be uh, the starter, he's been consistent there as well. So, uh, his corrections uh, get less every week, and uh, he's understanding, you know, the how to work within 
the other 10 players on the field. So he's been a nice addition, and he's helped us move some guys around to get A.J. where, where he can be helpful to us as well, uh, you know, of the things that are going on in the secondary. When you uh, when you look at this North Dakota State team, look at them on film and stuff, study them, how different or similar are they from all the North Dakota State teams you've faced in recent years? Uh, to me, it's very similar. I don't think there's – the visuals are all very similar uh, as, as I watch them from all the years. I don't see a lot of differences year to year. I mean, it's you see the numbers change and the players change a little bit, but uh, – but the type of play, the personality of the team, and the and the, and the way they play, is is very similar to to teams that we played in the past and games. And with saying that, I'm just wondering, does that make the preparation as far as for the coaching staff somewhat easier? It's not like they've changed their offense or changed their defense. Does that help you a little bit in prep, knowing they're they're just doing what they? It's still tough to beat them or just. It's them, but is that to me that's no to me it's a, that's neutral it's that's that's a push because in my opinion they see the same thing in us i mean there's year to year it's just the numbers change the people change within the numbers and schematically a lot of the things are similar there'll be tweaks here and there every year but of where the strength is in your players but right now i don't i think that's that's pretty equalized even uh, with the new offensive coordinator there there's still some play calls the guy you're actually fairly familiar with, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, do they still look like they're they're calling the same plays? Is he still attacking? Teams? Yeah, it appears to me they're playing. It's 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 the system. He's he's working the system that that he he got moved into, and so I see a lot of the same stuff. I mean, it's I don't see a lot of differences. Maybe I'm not looking at it right, but I don't see a lot of differences in last year to this year. Uh, everybody's there except for, you know, Courtney's the new one to the mix, so I'm sure he's, I don't think Courtney was going to go in there and change the world as far as terminology and things. He was going to play what they do and and learn that. So it was for him, knowing Courtney, he'll go in and learn what they do, and one guy has to learn it instead of, you know, 50 guys have to learn it. So that's why I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of it is very similar to what they did last year and what I've seen on, on film so far it is. Yeah, what uh, what makes Lance Dunn good when you see him on field? What makes him work so well in their offense? His consistency. He runs hard all the time. Uh, he's 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 really grown into a really nice running back, but he's consistent. I mean, he's he doesn't put the ball on the ground. Uh, gets positive yards all the time, and is consistent year to year. I see I see a player that was consistently growing year to year, and he wasn't have a good day, and 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 you know up and down career he's had a, he's had a consistent growth in his career and and now he's at the senior year of it so he's having a great year you're going into a game where you've had this monumental growth in your run game run game run game now you're going against a team that uh you know last week i think the longest run they gave was eight yards i think they only gave up like maybe 1.9 yards what's uh, and, the, and they've been moving parts in their defensive front to talk about what makes their defensive run game so good they they they've always been like i said they've always their system is pretty Consistent every year, uh, their secondary does a nice job of of fitting the gaps that they're responsible for, and uh, they always do a nice job with their front. So schematically, they've always been sound, and uh, like I said, they've got really good football players and and, and with a good system. You, you've got some guys that have played in the Fargo Dome before, but you'll have some that'll play in that environment for the first time. Are there some things you can do to kind of help? prepare them for what they'll face in that environment on Saturday? No, not really. I mean, I think, and, you know, that's just like anything. It's until you have play in those situations, until you play in those games. I mean, it's, it's, it's the... It's how the player's going to respond at that time. So there's, there's really nothing they can do uh, to prepare. It's just, you know, they're going to have to have, have great focus, and, and uh, their teammates can tell them, a little bit what what to expect, but nobody nobody really understands it until you're sitting on the sitting on the floor. I mean, heck, our coaches don't understand it. They think they know. All right, they don't know. Okay, it's until you've been there, until you experience it. There's only a few places that that can that can create that kind of environment, and they're one of them. So it's something that we we all just need to uh, 
make sure we prepare as a team, and then and then we'll have to adjust as as it unfolds there. The last couple of weeks, uh, the running game has, has obviously been much better. Earlier in the year, the passing numbers were bigger. Do you feel like the offense is at a point now where you can kind of take the looks that the defense is giving you and be effective, whether it's through the air or on the ground? You hope that's the case. I don't know if you're ever there. We haven't arrived by any means. Marcus has really helped us because he's getting positive yards. But uh, – we we need we need to improve our offense this week because like I, we said this three weeks ago each week it's you know you're going to get a tougher opponent a better defense and and now we're to North Dakota State so uh, you know they're going to have to, they're going to have to improve from from last week they're going to have to we we need to get rid of air that we have on that field and uh, and we need to clean up some things communication wise so we're a long ways from arriving on offense or defense right now but. We've made good progress in the in the last couple of games. You guys played with some. It looked like some extra pace at times on Saturday. So the communication seems to be trending in the right direction. I think. Do something like that. I think I think we're trending in the right way because we can we can grow week to week right now and 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 pull from last week as much as you know install for this week. So today's practice can be a you know a continuation from Saturday. It doesn't have to be go back and. And, and try to get some things in, and that's that's part of, you know, as, as as you spoke of, you got guys that are starting to get familiar with the whole process of it all, whether it's Monday's practice or Friday's meetings. So it's I'm pleased with what happened the previous two weeks of how we've gotten better the previous two weeks. Now the test is is can we get better this afternoon? Can you imagine where you were three weeks ago or two weeks ago that you'd be playing for first place on Saturday? In the I no, I never never thought of it like that. I'm just, I'm just. We need to get better today. <laughs> I mean, if I, we can just stay in that mode, we'll have a lot better chance. You know, to be might be better tomorrow. But how much how much better does it feel to be in that spot where you've come back and now? You, you're in a huge, one of the biggest FCS football games and big, biggest MVFC football games of the season, at least at this juncture on Saturday. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it, it's great for the players. It's just great. It's it's you and I. That's what it's it's part of being at you and I. So they're getting the true sense of what it's like to be at you and I right now, and uh, you know they've they've held up well, but their biggest test is yet to come. Uh, injury, any significant uh, updates there? Uh, the only one, Aaron, I don't know, Aaron Graham didn't play last week. Okay, he's, uh, I'd probably say that one's questionable right now. Uh, Twait. Twait's questionable right now. I wouldn't say that he's out, but I'd say, uh, I'd say he's questionable. Uh, Carhartt's probably questionable. And, uh, Heck, Marcus is always questionable, so. <laughs> so so he'll limp in and limp out and play hard in between the whistles. Just to make sure that we're right on this, with Jared's targeting in the first half, he can play right away on Saturday. He doesn't have to sit out at all. No, his his penalty what came in the first half, so you have to go out that half and then the next half. So he served his time. Do you, do you talk to the play? I mean, we'd hate to lose a guy like that on Saturday. I mean, do, is that something you, you talk about, trying to avoid those kind of... Hits and I mean sometimes it, it seems like it's almost incredible you're going to have some collisions like that. Well, on um, it's you you got to get them ramped up to play, and the hard part of playing defense right now is within the rules. So we've actually taught them to tackle low, and we're actually if you look at it, we're taking a lot of guys low right now. In years past, we take them a lot higher because of this, the rule and because of the interpretation of the rule. If you come close to the head, you're probably going to get thrown out and you're probably not going to go to replay all you want. I doubt they're going to save you. So uh, what I would say, though, is is on that particular play, what happens on defense now, when you do go low, he went into a slide on his knees. Instead of sliding into second base, he led with his body. So at the collision, Jared had already given up. I mean, he was already into the hit. And then when the kid went low, he, Jared was already going low on him. But when he went into the slide, that put the heads at the same level. And 
as he told me, he could have played the play ten times. He couldn't pull out of that hit by the time that had happened, you know. So I understand both sides on that one. But there's some that are just forearms to the head and stuff like that. That should be eliminated from the game. I'd wholeheartedly behind it and throw those guys out. But now we're at the point that in the protection of players, that a slide of a quarterback, it gets to be difficult or, you know, if, if a receiver, even a short receiver, tends to go low right at the end, and we try to go low, then you got the head contact low, even though it wasn't implied. You know, it, it happens. So it's it's part of the game right now, and it's really helped our game, this rule, because there's less guys getting thrown out, but there's always that that aspect of the game, even though you try to do it right, there's times that will occur that, that you'll get targeting. They're not going to give you any leeway, even if it's a terrible slide by the quarterback? That, you know, they've never listened to me yet, so I doubt, <laughs> I'm, I doubt I'm going to influence them now. Is there such a thing where, just to reference that, because I wanted to talk about this, that if a running back is running and he, at the last, last minute, ducks his head down to try and run over a defender and that creates the head-to-head, -head, it still always goes against the defense. Could the offensive player ever get called for... Targeting and leading with his helmet? I don't. That, that's a great question. I don't think the offensive runner would ever. They, they, if he, he's he's the aggressor, and now you got big backs like David Johnson, big backs like, well, heck, look at the kid from Penn State. Now he's hurtling people. Well, that's because we got to go low. You know, if we go high, the other thing could happen. So it's and then it becomes hurdles. So it's it's part of the game, and it's it's, you know, like it or not, it's it creates a a different aspect of the game that we didn't have when we played. We just took them out. But uh, now you try to teach it right, but now you see a lot more players hurtling uh, players week to week. And, and I think I think we hurtled a guy the other day. But I know that's because there's a lot of teaching going on that we're trying to take our players lower in the regard of that collision. Because the speed of offense is so good. Everything's going crossing wise now it's not coming direct anymore everything is crossing and that's when a lot of speed is gets applied so it's i didn't want to get into all that but that's part of, that's that's part of playing defense right now that we have to teach we have to be conscious of because the defender will pay the price more than not than anybody else and getting thrown out and it's too bad because it's only you only get 11 games in your career and a half of a half of a game is like missing eight basketball games to a basketball player I mean, it's that, that big of a difference if you look at percentages of play when you get 11 versus 35s and those types of things. So it's a huge penalty that you pay for targeting. Anybody else? All right, thanks. Thank you, Mark. Next up, uh, UNI Women's Tennis head coach Chris Sager's Panthers had a uh, a duo take part in the ITA Central Regional down in Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, Gazella Kemper and Reagan Lynch took part down there in uh, Lawrence over the weekend. With the recap, it's head coach Chris Sagers. Yeah, always fun to uh, compete in the ITA Regionals. Uh, a lot of the big schools there, uh, amazing competition. So always fun to play against, uh, watch some of the big uh, big school players play. Um, just uh, It's a good experience. And uh, like Colin said, Regan Lynch and Gisela Kemper, two of our players that qualified, um, they played doubles. Unfortunately, uh, in singles as well, got uh, tough first round opponents. Uh, they ran into a uh, Arkansas first round in doubles. And unfortunately, uh, a single elimination, you lose and you're out. And um, you now we competed hard, you know, made some mistakes, but against a team like Arkansas, where they don't, um, they don't give you much. You just, you have to be on. Um, but uh, hopefully they learn from it, realize they got to be more aggressive in doubles. That's with our, um, with all of our players on our team. Just we got to be more aggressive in doubles. We just can't stay back at the, at the baseline or. Uh, just standing up in that, not making plays, and um, uh, especially against that uh, Arkansas team, I think we learned that we got to be aggressive. Otherwise, they're gonna they're gonna uh, walk all over us. And so uh, that was doubles, and then moving on to singles again. Both got tough first rounds. Uh, starting out with Regan, she played a Minnesota girl first round, first set. Uh, didn't start out too well, but played very well in the second set. It was actually up, up a break in the second set. And uh, unfortunately, um, kind of um, lost a few points here and there. A Minnesota girl came back and uh, was able to defeat her. But uh, hopefully what she took away was it that, you know, she didn't play her best and she was right there in that match with that Minnesota girl, which is, uh, to me, saying something. And then... Um, 
her next match, she got to go in the constellations and just played a Southeast Missouri State girl, just a very tall girl, aggressive player, uh, had to play outside and a lot of wind, not using that as an excuse, but that uh, her opponent did very well with that. Took, uh, took shots early inside the baseline and attacked, and uh, unfortunately, Regan, who likes to just play a lot from the baseline. It was, it, was, it was tough for her to compete against that. So unfortunately, um, took the loss there. But um, with Gisela, again, starting out with a tough match, Oklahoma State girl, which um, she ended up losing to her. Oklahoma State girl, I think, made it all the way. I haven't checked how she finished, but was in the semis of the main draw. So very tough opponent. Um, uh, scores didn't uh, didn't look good, but you know competed the best she could. But very proud of Gisela. Won three matches after that. So to me, winning three matches in the ITA uh, regional is, is very impressive. Uh, got um, come come from behind wins on, on two of the matches. You know, one of the matches against the St. Louis girl. She's down. 5-0 in the first set and clawed back, went up 7-5, and then actually 3-0 in the second set. So for her to rattle off 10 straight games and then eventually beating her, uh, very proud of her for that. Could have um, ended up losing that set, losing that match, but uh, clawed back and got the win, and then eventually lost to a, a tough player from the uh, from Missouri. So uh, very good tournament for her, uh, wrapped up, um, you know, Ending up what was kind of a disappointing conference for us, uh, individual conference. So I ended it out um, on a better note and uh, got to got a lot to work on in the off season before we uh, start up again in uh, in January. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I uh, just want to make mention of a brief announcement regarding you and I men's basketball. Panthers will play an exhibition game November 1st at Wisconsin in the Kohl Center, 7 p.m. tip time. Uh, that game will uh, will be hosted by Wisconsin. Uh, tickets for that game will be will be free with donations uh, accepted by the UW Badgers uh, ticket office, uh, all benefiting Team Rubicon. So uh, next Wednesday, November 1st, 7 p.m. in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, you and I men's basketball will take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Looking forward to that uh, that exhibition contest. Thank you for coming out today. Go Panthers.